my booktube Lynette here and today's video is going to be all about the books that I managed to finish in the month of July. I got to the end of July feeling like I hadn't had a very good reading month um, but then when I've looked back I actually managed to finish 10 books. I think it was just that towards the end of the month I hit a bit of a slump, I was struggling to pick things up, it had been very hot here in the UK and I don't feel like doing much of anything when it's hot, I don't know about you. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did struggle to read, I struggled to do any of my hobbies at all. Um, so it did leave me feeling a bit meh about how I got on with my reading this month. But like I say, I finished 10 books, so here we go, let's get on and talk about them. So the first book that I managed to finish this month was a new release that came out in June and that was Fury of Persuasion by Corrine Callahan. This is the fourth book in her Scottish Dragons book series that she's been writing and it's been an eagerly uh, waited book by me, um, if not by anyone else in the romance community, but definitely by me because I absolutely love Corrine's writing and I really love her dragon shifters that she's written about. Um, they're all very male, very alpha, very masculine. This book was no exception. This was about Vyroth and Nicole. Vyroth is imprisoned by another dragon pack and he is being held um, in an area that makes him unable to use his powers that he has as a dragon. And Nicole is sent to retrieve him from his cell and in doing so, Vyroth realises that Nicole is actually his forever mate. They manage to escape from the cell and it's all about what happens to them after that and how Vyroth convinces Nicole that he is trustworthy, that dragons can be trusted and she can stay with him. I really enjoyed being back in this world. There was another book released at the end of July which I'm really looking forward to picking up very very soon and there is another one due out in November again which I'm really looking forward to picking up very very soon because it's the continuation of all these stories and I just love Corrine's writing. If you like romance, you like dragon shifters, you like alpha males, you like women who actually have a lot of sass about them, because some of these women do very much stand up for themselves, then these books are a series for you, and I do highly recommend them. And then the next book that I finished was one that I should have read earlier in the year, um, but didn't, because I'm an umpty. Um, and that was The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince by Robin Hobb. This is a novella set in her realm of the Elderlings world and you're meant to read it before you read the Tawny Man trilogy. I'm well past the Tawny Man trilogy now. Um, I've actually read the Rainwells trilogy which comes after that. Um, but The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince goes into the history of the Farseer line, um, particularly how potentially the wit has been introduced into the line um, but also um, it doesn't really cover the skill which is what the Farsia magic actually is but it does cover the wit and how the wit is becoming um, something that is frowned upon by society in general uh, in this world that we are inhabiting while we're reading these books. I really enjoyed this um, it really did give me that little bit of insight. Like I say, there's a little bit of court intrigue in there. There's um, a bit more about the wit. It also made me think about, like I say, how the wit is in the Farsia line. So in the Farsia trilogy, which is the first trilogy in the whole realm of the Eldling series, we meet Fitz, who has the wit, and he is the bastard son of a prince. And I'm starting to wonder where the wit came from because maybe it's not where they say it came from. And that is all down to this book. So I do highly recommend, if you're reading the Realm of the Elderling series and you haven't gotten as far as uh, the Tawny Man trilogy, then definitely get a copy of this and read this before you go into it. It also helps with some of the background um, because this uh, these two characters are referred to quite a bit in the, especially in the beginning of the Tawny Man trilogy, because it does have some bearing on the story. Um, so yes, definitely pick it up if you haven't read the Tawny Man trilogy, or if you're doing a reread and you haven't read the Tawny Man trilogy, then try to get to this one first. I do highly recommend it. The next book was to finish off um, a book that I started many years ago, but never really finished because I was a bit bored of it. And that book is Hudson by Laurelyn Page. 
this is a follow-up to her fixed trilogy um which she originally wrote only it's being told from hudson pierce's point of view rather than elena's point of view um so this book is about hudson and elena and it's about their romance hudson is a bit of a jerk not gonna lie um and i actually liked him less in this book than i did in the original trilogy when i read it um i think it just shows him up a lot more um for the person that he is and yeah i didn't really like him much i kept reading it because i wanted to finish it and i wanted to knock it off of my um tbr list i started like i say i started it years ago when it first came out and i think i just had enough these sorts of retellings from the male point of view don't really do it for me um i read the first of the 50 shades retelling from the male point of view and i didn't get on with that i should have known as soon as i picked hubs picked up hudson that i was going to be the same i think the only time that retelling something from a male point of view um has worked is in another series that i've read and that is the driven series um but what the author has done instead of going back and rewriting the story she's just inserted chapters um from his point of view instead um, which i found worked really really well because you're getting it all at the same time rather than having to go back over everything you've already read and and absorbed and you've already gotten to the happy hour after so yeah so um i finished it wasn't that happy about it it was okay i would prefer to have just stuck with the trilogy and in fact i think the author has gone on to write more books in from these two characters and i'm just not willing to go there so I think that's going to be it for me. I don't know if I'll ever read this author again. I might try her again. Like I say, I remember enjoying the Fix trilogy. Just maybe not, maybe not when she revisits from other points of view um, outside of the original story. And then the next book that I picked up was because I watched a TV show adaptation of it. And that was Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. I originally watched the Netflix adaptation, which I really, really enjoyed, but I got to the end of the Netflix adaptation and they've cut it off and you don't know what's going on. And I wanted to know what the problem was. Um, it's about two women, Kate and Tully, who have been friends since they were 13, 14 years old, and it's following them through their lives right into their 40s. Uh, the TV show ends with there's something going on between them, but it's not really resolved and... I picked up the book because I wanted to know what the problem was. Um, the TV show has made a mountain out of a molehill, um, I think is probably the best way to put it. The story goes on a completely different tangent from where I thought it was going to go. And you need tissues uh, for this. I sobbed my way through the last quarter of the book. Um, and yes, I I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. Um, but trigger warnings for uh, death of family members um, and cancer and yes uh, and it's a bit of a weepy so I thought it was really great going back though like say you're following um, these characters from their teens right through into their 40s so you see them struggling with um, teenage issues you see them struggling with 20 year old issues 30 year old issues 40 year old issues falling in love, falling out of love, being happy, being unhappy. And um, yeah, I just felt it was a real excellent slice of life. And I definitely would pick something up by Kristen Hanna in future. Um, but yes, I just need more warning next time if I need tissues, because this one hit me in the feels. So after the letdown that was Hudson and the cry fest that was Firefly Lane, I needed something that was going to make me smile and be a lot happier and a lot cheerier in tone. And so I went for Meet Me in London by Georgia Toffolo. This is the first book in a series that she has written. And it was given to me by NetGalley in exchange for an honest opinion last year. Um, it actually released in December last year. So I did miss reading it in time for release day. But I have since been able to go back and leave a review. And I have to say, I left a really good review because I really enjoyed it. This book is about Victoria and Oliver. Victoria is a dress designer 
and she's recently come out of a relationship and her ex-partner has got re-engaged to the person that he was cheating on her with and I can identify with that very very well and yes she's not in a great place um to top it off Oliver is opening a department store down the end of her street and it could mean that a lot of the local businesses including her go out of business um she meets Oliver uh, outside the store, not realising that he is actually the store owner. And he doesn't let on straight away who he is. And he decides to lead her down a path. He is being challenged by his mum to meet his current girlfriend, who he has actually split up with. Um, but his mum wants to see him settle down and happy. So he asks Victoria if she will pretend to be his fiance until the opening of the store when they can split up and go their separate ways so this is a fake dating trope romance i'm sure we can all guess what happens after that um but yes it was lovely and it was sweet and there wasn't too much angst about it and i really enjoyed both of them it was fun it was light it was fresh and it just made me want to read more by this author so really really um enjoyed it and I immediately went on to see when the next books were released found that the next the second book in the series has already been released but the third one I've been able to get an advanced copy from NetGalley and that comes out at the end of this month and um, so I'm frantically now trying to read through those as well as I'm filming this but yes I really enjoyed it and I'm really looking forward to um, getting through Meet Me in Hawaii and Meet Me in Tahiti as well and then finally the final story which is going to be I don't know what it's going to be called but it's going to be set in Devon um so quite close to me um so I'm looking forward to it and I'm really glad that I picked it up and I do recommend it if you want something that is going to make you smile maybe give you a little bit of angst but not too much um, but if you need something light and fresh then definitely pick this book up so I seem to have been on a bit of a series kick in the month of July because from there which were again all series books I went on to Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising, which are books two and three in the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Again, I picked these up primarily because I watched the Shadow and Bone Netflix show, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, but I wanted to know the end of the story. And because it's a complete series, I had to pick it up. Um, so we are following Alina, who is um, finding out that she is a Grisha at the start of the first book, which is Shadow and Bone. Uh, which I read in June um, and she meets a man called Alexander who is the Darkling and he turns out to be not so good uh, she also has a best friend Mal who she's been in love with since they were children um, and she's torn two ways she's torn between them both and at the end of Shadow and Bone she has some choices to make and Siege and Storm and then Ruin and Rising deal with those um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's not the best series I've ever read. There are some problems with it. Um, I love The Darkling and I've heard it said on YouTube and Instagram um, that it's toxic to want Alina to end up with The Darkling. Now, I didn't necessarily want Alina to end up with Darkling. However, I could completely understand the attraction that she had for him. Um, he was charismatic, he was older, he was wiser, he was practised in the art of seduction and I completely, completely fell for him myself. So I can understand why someone as green to the world as Alina was, um, or that part of the world as Alina was, um, would fall for him and why people would want them to end up together. However, like I say, there were some issues I had with the story. Otherwise, it got a bit repetitive. She got into trouble. She got out of trouble. She got into trouble. She got out of trouble. She got into trouble. She got out of trouble. And by the end of Room and Rising, I was getting a bit bored. And I was glad it was over. However, I am keen to move on to Crooked Kingdom and Six of Crows. And I've got that the wrong way round. Um, to know more about other characters who were in the Shadow and Bone TV series. And also I want to pick up uh, Rule of King of Scars and Rule of Worlds, which then follows on from these books and follows on from a character that's in these books. Um, so I did enjoy them. 
um i wouldn't binge read them again i don't think um they would probably be ones that i read separately so i didn't get quite so bored with the storytelling style um but yes looking forward to reading more by lee pardugo in the future and then in the interest of trying to read books that were already on my shelves and i want again i wanted something a bit different so i'd done light and fluffy romance i'd done romance that bored me i'd done fantasy um I went for suspense and I picked up The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I bought this book last year during the first lockdown, um, or as we were coming out of the first lockdown and shops started reopening. Um, and it's about um, a mystery that I think is set in the 80s originally. Basically, uh, police are called to a house um, in London where uh, three adults are found dead in the kitchen and a baby is found upstairs and the mystery is who's been looking after the baby because the adults have been dead for a while now the adults are supposedly committed suicide in a cult pact and basically this story tells from um three different points of view it's told from the point of view of the baby who's now an adult it's told from the point of view also of two people who are involved with the house in some way one of those points of view is unreliable um and i found that really intriguing um and it is quite twisty and angsty you don't really know how everybody relates to each other until you get to the very end and i actually like that um i felt the ending though was a bit flat i thought maybe some things weren't fully explained um especially the behavior of one of the characters it wasn't fully explained um and i think there's more to this story than than what she's put in here and i would be interested whether she actually revisits it at some point but yes if you want something that's going to keep you guessing then definitely pick this book up um i definitely had some what the hell moments while i was reading it so i did thoroughly enjoy it and um i actually went to um supermarket today and i did actually look at lisa jewel's latest release the night she disappeared um and really considered picking it up because i enjoyed this book that well that i actually do want to um read more in this kind of vein and uh i think she would be an author to watch for me that i might pick up more in the future but not 100 percent certain but yes um apart from that ending really enjoyed it and do recommend it and then I went back to being influenced um, by TV shows for my reading. And the next book that I picked up was Fueled by Kay Bromberg. Um, a film company in America called Passion Flicks has been buying up the rights to um, uh, romance novels. They've been doing that for a few years now and they've been making them into films. Or in the case of the Driven series, they've been making them into TV series. Uh it's a subscription service and it costs about five pounds a month um, to subscribe to it obviously things have been a bit slow um with them because when i initially um subscribed to them they were still a startup so they were only able to film a couple of films a year because there was only a very small team but they're expanding they have been hit by covid obviously um but they have finally filmed fueled and it is out now at the point that this video is going up i'm not sure whether this video is going to go up before or after the last episode in the fueled series is going live but that is coming up in the next few days i haven't watched them yet but i will be um but this is the second book in riley and colton's story and it picks up immediately where book one left off this book is the one where christy starts writing from colton's point of view as well as from riley's point of view and like I said earlier, the chapters are actually inserted. So you might have a chapter told from his point of view entirely, or you might have a chapter retold from his point of view. So you can get inside his head at the same time and have more of an understanding. This book, if you're going to read this series, make sure if you enjoy the first book, when you buy Fueled, buy Crashed as well. Christy Bromberg is the queen of cliffhangers. Um, I don't recommend reading her serial books um, when she hasn't published the next one because you'll scream, you'll throw the book at the wall. I certainly, when I first read Fueled, wanted to throw my Kindle at the wall, but thankfully I had Crashed, so I carried straight on. I didn't carry straight on with Crashed. 
uh, this time around because I wanted to read this one just to refresh my memory of what happens because of the TV series. I love this um, story. It is one of my absolute favourite romance novels. This is the one that when people say to me, have you read Fifty Shades of Grey? Did you enjoy it? I say, yes, I have. No, I didn't. Read this instead. Um, it's There's not similarities between Colton and I've forgotten the name of the main character in Fifty Shades of Grey. There aren't a lot of similarities. It's just that I think this was the next series in that sort of genre, in the romantic genre, um, that I read that really stood out for me. So I definitely highly recommend the Driven series and especially if you want to dip your toe in the more erotic side of fiction because that's what these books do. And thoroughly enjoy it and looking forward to moving on to Crashed at some point when I know what the release date is for that series. So after I'd finished Fueled, we then had the hottest week of the year and I hit a reading slump and I didn't do very well. Um, and after that, I only finished one more thing. And that was when I was on the coach to London. Uh, I picked up a book um, that I've had rumbling around my um, unread pile or currently reading pile for quite a few years. And that is the mammoth book of Paranormal Romance. This is just an anthology of romance short stories by a variety of authors. I had started reading it many, many years ago. I think I started reading it back in 2012. That's how long I've had it hanging around on my Kindle, partially read. But while I was on the coach journey, I had about three, three and a half short stories left and I managed to get through them all. Again, enjoyed them. Um, I don't really remember any of the early stories. Um, they were just, they were okay um and yeah not really anything that stood out to me um but I'm glad I read them it's another one that is off of my TBR and it's another one that's tidied up my kindle for partially read books and I'm looking forward to doing more of that during August because that's my intent during August is to finish up books like that as well um so I don't really have much to say about that one other than they were pretty much okay So that was the books that I read in the month of July. Um, yeah, so like I say, it wasn't a bad month. Um, in terms of books, I pretty much enjoyed most of them. I mean, I had some that were a bit meh um, and I had some that maybe didn't blow me away as much as I was hoping they would. But it wasn't a month of bad reads at all. And apart from not reading anything for the last couple of weeks of the month, because I just got too hot and fell out of the habit of reading, um, yeah, I, I, not a bad month at all. What did you read in the month of July? Please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to chat with you all there. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, then please do like. And if not already, then please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you here. Uh, just so you know, I put up videos every Monday at 6.30pm UK time. And I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.